Hey everybody, Jeff Chandler here again, Director of Education and Programs with CASI, Canadian Association of Snowboard Instructors. And we're back again with another installment of uh, our little uh, webinar presentation series, info sessions here. So today we're talking about uh, Park Instructor courses, Park Instructor One course. And uh, if you tuned into our last What's New presentation uh, from a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that uh, we put a put quite a bit of time and effort into that Park Instructor course this year, trying to um, update it, modernize the content, just improve on it overall so that the presentation of that info uh, fits with current trends and, and uh, is just improved overall. So we're going to look a little bit closer at that Park Instructor 1 course today. And uh, so I'm just going to go to that Park Instructor page under Courses on the website. And uh, we'll take a look at the course guide and the evaluation methods and all that sort of stuff. So um, this page on the website for Park Instructor 1 just gives us a bit of an overview of, of uh, who the course is for. So um, just a reminder, the prerequisite for that course is that it's uh, you need to be a level one instructor. Um, and as it says here, you should have a desire to introduce new students to snowboarding in the park or in freestyle terrain or introducing freestyle tricks safely and successfully. And so that's always been our focus with this park course is that um, it's always been a fundamental level course where uh, what we were really trying to do is introduce some of the concepts that we cover in the level one instructor course, again, on the park course, but we apply those things to teaching in freestyle terrain or introducing free freestyle terrain to students for the first time. Um, we're not talking about high level skill. It's a basic level skill course, and it still is. You'll, I think you'll see in the new content and the new uh, standards. But what we're really trying to do is really pass on a good sense of the fundamentals that are involved there in that course. Um, so then in the next section here, you can see the uh, Am I Ready section, the Park Instructor Standards require that candidates pass both a riding and a teaching evaluation. Um, and we suggest that you really take the following steps in preparation. So spend some time working as an instructor. And one of the notes in the course guide that we'll look at quickly here is that the best, uh, one of the best forms of preparation is experience. So spending some time working as an instructor is really key. And, uh, and just getting exposure to different types of students and honing your explanation skills and your group management skills, especially when you get into park terrain or freestyle terrain, where that safety aspect is really big and moving moving through terrain like that with a group can be a challenging thing. So teaching a lot of beginner lessons and working in the beginner area can really set you up to be successful on that park course when you do get there. And then if it's available to you, uh, take a session with a park evaluator. So there's a lot of resorts now out there that who have evaluators on staff and many of those evaluators would also be park evaluators. So it's a good time to spend a uh, good thing, maybe to spend some time, go out for a session with that person and just ask them about whether you, they feel that your skills are there at the level of the, of the park course and what other things they'd suggest to, uh, to make sure that when you get to that course, you can come out of it being successful. Um, cost of the course. So it's a two day course. Uh, and as it's uh, a course beyond the level one level, because this is our 25th anniversary this year, um, this course uh, does feature the $25 discount. So it's a good year to take advantage of that. Um, prerequisites, um, it's a level one instructor, fluent in English or French, and uh, able to demonstrate comfortable and safe riding skills on intermediate terrain, as well as in basic park features. Uh, a little description there, we'll go through that in the course guide and then the course duration which is that two day course duration or 12 hours. And that includes the evaluations as well. Um, so just if we open up the, the course guide here, the park course guide, which you can access from this webpage uh, under the resources tab by clicking on the download button there for the park one course guide, that brings us to the actual document, the PDF document. Um, and so really what I want to cover here is some of the changes or the updates to the standards for the course and uh, also some of the um, updates that we've made for um, just to the content that the evaluators will be presenting. So um, <clears throat> let's jump, jump right into this course guide here. A lot of this info on this first page, the introduction page, is, is mimicked on the website or on the web page there. So uh, who should take the course? Am I ready? All that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and one note here, I talked about this in our What's New presentation last week, that attendance and participation in the entire course is mandatory. So the course is made up of 12 hours, minimum of 12 hours. Part participation and attendance in that entire 12 hours is a mandatory part of receiving a, an assessment at the end of the course. 
So a quick look at the agenda. It's a two-day program, a two-day course. Uh, day one is really laid out very similarly to the level one instructor course. We tried to sort of draw some parallels between the level one certification and the park level one certification. So uh, in the morning, following the introductions and a bit of a warm up process, definitely a discussion about park etiquette and park safety. And we've always had that in our park course over the years. That's nothing new. And then we get into the uh, presentation, which we're calling the core competencies in freestyle snowboarding. So um, if I just slide down a little bit further here to that presentation within the course guide, which is on page nine, the core competencies in freestyle snowboarding. So our goal here for this first morning is to take those core competencies, which are explored on the level one and the level two course. And that's sort of the known information, the stuff that if you're a level one or level two instructor, that's the stuff that you will have known, have uh, learned about in, in your level one and level two course. And now we're applying these to really basic freestyle snowboarding uh, teaching and riding. So uh, obviously we start with that terrain park safety and etiquette. Um, and that's one of the one of the big keys there for when we end up teaching students in that terrain and really passing on those um, those parts points about the Alpine Responsibility Code, the Spartan style classification system, the use of spotters, moving safely through the park, all that sort of stuff, calling drop ins, etc. And then we get into the presentation for the rest of the morning where we take those competencies of, for example, a centered and mobile position, which we talk about quite in depth on the level one course in the first morning and the level two course. And now we're applying it to what are some things that the candidates should show or be able to demonstrate. So if you're taking this course as a potential park instructor, um, when it comes to that centered and mobile position, we're looking for candidates to show a uh, good grasp of this freestyle triangle concept. So a neutral position with your head at the peak of the triangle, for example, but having mobility, comfort, and strength to explore various forms of that triangle. So it's not always uh, with our head at that midpoint between the feet. Um, the thing about freestyle riding and riding in the park in general is that we can move that freestyle triangle. The one thing that we do want to see is that we can maintain the structural integrity of that position and limit any sort of twisting or bending to get into those uh, kind of more funky positions. And then for a little bit of direction here for the evaluator running the course or for the instructor using this information later on, these are some tactics there that we could use to really illustrate some of those concepts. So some basic switch riding, exploring some centered body positions, and even using a bit of a butter yoga type tactic to sort of look at how uh, that mobility and strength really influ influence our ability to stay or move uh, around in that freestyle triangle position. Moving on to the second core competency, which is that concept of turning the snowboard using the lower joints. So really the goal here is we wanna see that park instructor candidates, successful park instructor candidates know the role of the hips, knees and feet in creating rotations. So a lot of times when we're talking about turning the snowboard in a freestyle context, we're talking about rotations or pivoting the board through a feature or through a trick. <clears throat> so that idea of efficient direction control towards a target or towards a feature is definitely something there. So if you think back to your level one course, when we talk about turning with the lower body, it's about efficiency. And we've all hopefully by this point heard that analogy of holding a pen and trying to write with a pen at the top of the pen or write with the pen at the down by the tip of the pen it's way more efficient if we can hold the pen uh, further down. So efficient direction control, and this really just relates to moving through park terrain or through park or freestyle features and actually finding the line, the desired line through that terrain. The other point here that <clears throat> is highlighted is efficient control of speed. So proper speed checks uh, using counter rotation or just simply lower body rotation. Um, balance in general rotations, so flatland type rotations on the snow, maybe if the odd rotation on a box or a rail, um, or even in the air, if we're talking about something like a 180. And then use of lower body steering will allow for rotational separation required for spins and more complex maneuvers when we get further on past the fundamental stage, past the park one level. And then again, we have some uh, suggested tactics and sort of um, concrete examples of ways that we can really explore this concept of uh, turning with the lower body. And then our third competency, balance over the working edge. Shouldn't be anything new from the level one or the level two. And really in a freestyle context or for the context of this course, we're talking about using edge grip to achieve control in a freestyle maneuver. So balancing leaning and bending, balancing the concepts of inclination and angulation. 
using the knees and the ankles to create a, an edged platform. And and the note there that not to, not over edging, so more edge doesn't always equal more grip. So getting the concept of just enough edge to create the pat platform that's needed, uh, allowing the center of mass of the body to stay over the base of support. And then riders should equally blend inclination and angulation to pop or jump when desired. And then uh, <clears throat> some concrete or some different examples that the evaluator will work through with the group during that morning presentation. So that's sort of the first one, and it really represents kind of the riding standard side. And so the way the level one course is laid out, if you think back to your level one course, the first morning is all about your personal riding skills and and getting your you comfortable with the standard for the course and getting you to that level the, of um, what the technical standard is on the course. It's not so much about the teaching yet. This is um, maybe a little bit uh, a little bit beyond what we would typically be teaching someone who's going into the park into park terrain for the first time. But it's more about the riding level of the instructor when it comes to demonstrations. Just going back to the agenda here. Um, so that's the morning of day one between that nine o'clock uh, to 12 o'clock time slot there on the morning of day one. And then we get into our second workshop here, which is the teaching freestyle fundamentals. And this is a new workshop as well that we've uh, we developed and highlighted as something that was uh, could be built on or improved from the previous park instructor course. So if I flip down to page 11 here, uh, we can have a look at this outline for this workshop. So the freestyle fundamentals, and this is really the teaching information of the park one course. <clears throat> so when we get into the freestyle fundamentals, really what we're talking about is a number of goals here. So the goal of this session, introduce instructors to the fundamental movements and skills for freestyle snowboarding right at the top of the page there. At the end of the session, candidates should understand those fundamental skills and movements for introducing snowboarders to freestyle or park snowboarding and be familiar with structuring a lesson to introduce those skills. And so the format that we generally follow uh, traditionally on the park one course and the level one course, whenever we're teaching kind of basic um, uh, new skills to students is that building block format. So we've identified a few fundamentals, uh, fundamental skills or movements or outcomes for freestyle or park riding, introductory freestyle riding. And so those are listed down the left-hand column here. So we've got approach and takeoff, and that could be approach and takeoff in relation to any maneuver or um, terrain park feature or freestyle feature outside of the park. We've got butters and flatland tricks, and then we've got jumping and getting air. And then the last one is introdu introducing boxes and rails. So those are kind of the big the big uh, concepts that are uh, explored during this uh, this session. So we've got things like uh, when it comes to approach and takeoff, we want to establish a flat base. We want to get into a body position to maintain that flat base. And we want to be able to move out of that flat base position to speed check to adjust our speed. And then we've got some a series of suggested progressions here, um, you know, three to six step progressions or, or little mini building blocks that we could use to introduce that fundamental to a student who's learning it for the first time. Same thing with butters and flatland tricks. The key goal or the key point there is adjusting that freestyle triangle sort of concept to achieve whatever the flatland trick is. Um, so uh, really you, taking this statement here, building a new triangle over one foot at a time, especially when we're talking about moving from front foot to back foot in flatland tricks, we're trying to stack ourselves over that new base of support, uh, effectively creating a new freestyle triangle or an altered triangle over one foot at a time. So, and then we've got a, a little bit of a mini building block here on the right hand column for that one. When we're talking about jumping or getting air or introducing air, we've got uh, for a number of years now, we've talked about these three methods of coast, pop, and ollie. And so kind of taking a look at each of those and trying to determine which one is uh, the most appropriate for a student. And that'll depend on the student's skill level, the terrain features available, the park features available, uh, the snow conditions even of the day. All those factors will play into, you know, which one a good instructor will introduce on the, on the day, whether it's coast, pop, or ollie, as well as the previous experience, previous experience of the student. And then finally wrapping it up with introduction to rails and to boxes and rails. So safety and progression to introduce riders to boxes and rails. And then we've got another little bit of a mini building block there. So that session, um, which really built really is the teaching information on the new, this new part course, uh, you could, you could kind of equate it to the quick ride system in the uh, level one course that takes the bulk of the time. So the full afternoon on day one, 
and the full morning on day two. So the way that we're, we're uh, presenting that course is through a presentation uh, example followed by a practice teach format. And so this is something that we've adopted on our level one instructor course recently where um, participants on the course will get a good example of a, of a building block format lesson, maybe catering to approach and takeoff. And then they'll have a chance right away to practice that with their peers on the course or the other particip participants in the group on the course. And that takes us right through to the next morning. There's a couple of indoor workshops as well, review workshops sprinkled in there at the end of day one and in the morning of day two. And then we wrap up the course which it, with a session which we're calling Teaching Beyond the Fundamentals, which is a, essentially a progression building uh, session where we can start to take those fundamental movements and, and start to look at some maybe some other scenarios that instructors teaching students who want to learn park skills might encounter. So um, we'll, we'll explore things like uh, higher end, uh, building more complex maneuvers or higher end maneuvers once students have those um, have those fundamentals down. And then it's really looking at it as a bit more of a kind of peer coaching session there on that last afternoon of the course where um, led by the evaluator, but candidates or participants on the course will get a chance to really start to um, use their own teaching skills and background and experience to create some um, some building block progressions to look at some more complex maneuver, more complex freestyle tricks and maneuvers and tackling a little bit bigger features. So that's kind of the general layout of flow of the course. Um, as we go through back past uh, the agenda here to page three, we have some information in the course guide about the evaluation system. And there's really nothing new here. Um, as it says, candidates will be assessed and updated daily on their performance. It's an ongoing uh, evaluation on the Park One course, the same as it is on the Level One and Level Two instructor course. So um, really what we're looking for is that uh, idea that there's some constant improvement through the two days. And hopefully by the end of the two days, the participants on the course are able to show um, that they are uh, have reached those assessment criteria that are outlined a little bit lower down here. So the marking system is a simple below meets or above standard. Um, candidates must achieve a meets or above standard in both the teaching and the riding components in order to be certified as a Park, in, park 1 instructor. A um, little bit of information here on retests. Um, and then uh, we get into what are the actual assessment criteria. So when we talk about the teaching assessment, we've got the two portions of the course, the teaching and the riding. Uh, the overarching goal here is that these instructors can teach fundamental freestyle or terrain park skills in accordance with CASI technique and methodology. So when that comes down to sh choosing terrain that's suitable and safe for this level of student, uh, presenting the information clearly using co good communication skills, uh, that their demonstrations, they can de demonstrate all of the relevant maneuvers laid out in the course material. Uh, when it comes to providing some feedback, they recognize as the causes of difficulty in student trials and can also provide positive and relevant feedback to those students uh, to achieve those outcomes. Um, on a lesson structure sort of front, we're looking for instructors at this level to demonstrate good lesson organization skills. And really that goes back to that method of presentation of the building block type step-by-step um, -step format in, the, in teaching these lessons. And then that they can create a positive, safe and student-centered learning environment. And that's where the experience level of the instructor really comes into play there. Um, the more time you've spent with different types of students and struggled maybe with some challenging situations in your teaching, the better you'll, uh, the more confidence you'll have in creating that good student-centered learning environment. So then the next part here, we talk about the riding assessment. So really the overarching goal here on this side is that they de demonstrate effective basic freestyle riding skills. And so we really want to, I really want to stress that point that this is a, this is a fundamental level course. It's a basic level course designed to give instructors the tools to introduce the fundamental skills to students who are new to freestyle riding and park riding. And so one of our big goals here for this course was to present the information in a way that more effectively um, relayed these fundamentals. So really getting into the specifics of what's required for a good set approach and takeoff, what's required for introducing someone to a box for the first time. How can we really do a good job of introducing jumping to somebody so that later on, when they come back for that next lesson, um, they have that fundamental, that sort of, they have that good foundation built in their skills. 
So some of the things that we're looking for in the in your skill as an instructor to, when it comes to your riding skills for this course is that you can ride consistently at a safe speed in beginner terrain park features or in freestyle terrain. And that's key. Speed control in park, especially small park uh, environments, is really key. So it's not fast. It's not too fast. It's not too slow. It's probably you could classify it as, you know, the right speed matched up to the terrain feature or the maneuver that you're attempting. Um, maintains a relaxed, balanced, and athletic position over the board. That's a pretty straightforward point that really gets carried over from course to course. Adjusts the duration and sequence of movements to achieve desired outcomes. So we're really talking about coordination and timing skills there. Um, and the, the idea that really these are technical riding skills that are demonstration quality skills. And so if when I say demonstration quality, they should be consolidated to the level where it's repeatable time and time again. And that's really apparent through this concept of adjusting the duration and sequence of movements as required. Um, and it really lends itself to the point below it, which says shows some basic ability to adjust technique as conditions or features change. And that's where this concept of demo quality movement or repeatable movement or consolidation of skill really comes out. And so we know that when we're early on in that sort of skill development model, we're trying to repeat those skills over and over as, say, a demonstration of a board slide or a 180 or a great air, uh, straight air with a grab. Um, that ability to repeat those skills when maybe things, uh, challenges get thrown into the mix really gets hard until we've consolidated those things. And then we get into some specifics here. So we're looking for candidates to consistently demonstrate the following things. So. Um, have a good grasp of changes in balance and position to show a good variety of flatland tricks. So a nose and tail press, basic nose and tail press uh, in the fall line on, a, on mellow terrain. An ollie into a press, so off the tail onto the front foot or off the nose and onto the back foot or vice versa. Uh, nose and tail presses with rotations. So being able to restack and create a new freestyle triangle over the front or back foot and add in that concept of rotation. Um, and then we get into uh, effective demonstrations of a straight air with variation. And so this term of with variation is a new addition to our uh, language around this course. And so um, really what we're referring to there is you have sort of the basics of the maneuver. And then in order to sort of open it up to show um, consolidation or even some refinement of skill, we're looking for some variation on the maneuver. So uh, it says effective demonstration of a straight air with variation on a small terrain park jump. Uh, absorbs pressures on landing using flexion. Variations might include, in a straight air, it might include a shifty or might include a grab. Um, so it's not just uh, not just sort of a black and white straight air, but we're looking for some kind of variation to be added to that to show that skill development. Uh, and then the third point uses rotation of the core to initiate and execute rotations and can complete 180 degree rotation in both the front side and back side directions on a small terrain park jump. So we're talking about in the fall line off of a small built jump, um, uh, being confident with both of those 180s. So a front side 180 that's in the forward direction and a back side 180 that's in the, that's in also in the forward direction. So we're looking for confidence spinning in those two different directions. So, um, you know, spinning in that front side direction and the back side direction with a forward uh, or a natural stance takeoff. And then the last one can demonstrate balance and create a flat base on a box or rail feature to show an, a 50-50 with variation. So there's that term there again with variation on a small rail or box. So variations there might include a press or a shifty or a rotation or a small board slide, that type of thing. So we very clearly, um, I think, laid out what we're looking for as far as maneuvers there. Um, one of the challenges we always have with teaching park courses is that parks vary from mountain to mountain. And so um, one resort's version of a small terrain park jump may not be the same as another resort's version. So that it's going to come down to, um, you know, a little bit of adaptability from the evaluators or the presenters teaching this course so that we have a consistent message that's being passed along. But it's very clear here what, uh, what are the things to work on in order to pass this course and uh, what will make a successful candidate on this park course. And then when we get into the marking system here, basically what this sort of illustrates is the difference, you know, what's the difference between a, a below standard on the teaching to a meet standard to an above standard. And really the guiding sort of uh, idea here is that it's it all falls on that skill development model. So if you're familiar with the 
the Cassie reference guide, if you've cracked that open recently, you'll remember that concept of initiation through acquisition and consolidation and refinement. And so in relation to the Park One standard, the way I always think of it is it's, it comes down to consistency. So a candidate who falls on the below standard end of the spectrum will still be acquiring those skills and the consistency isn't there. So, um, you know, for example, um, you, when it comes to the demonstrations, for example, they may, may not be adapted to the skill level of the student. They're not always clear. Uh, that demonstration skill maybe is not uh, at the repeatable level that we're looking for when it comes to consistency. When we move to the meet standard side, all of these uh, skills that we're looking for on the teaching and the writing side, they're happening with much more with a higher level of consistency. So more often than not, um, those those points are being hit on, in, whether it's the teaching skills or whether it's the writing skills. And then in the left hand column, if it's an above standard mark, then we get into the refinement sort of side where um, the consistency is pretty close to every time those skills are being demonstrated are there. And even to the point where there's some adaptability into in those skills. So if uh, a bit of a twist gets thrown in, so there's an icy patch right in front of the box, uh, balance is still maintained or um, if you're teaching a lesson and a trail is closed and you need to uh, change on the fly, that's where we start talking about the above standard skills on this left hand column. And all the specifics for each of the uh, marked components are there from uh, the teaching skills right through through the writing competencies that you can review. So as long as we're talking about the standards on the course, um, you can also access from the course guide. Uh, if you go right down to the end of this document, you can access the marking form so you have a really good idea of what exactly is being marked. So I just have a little uh, more visible version of the marking marking form here, and it has been updated as well. Uh, actually, all of our marking forms this year for all of our courses have been updated. But one of the things to note here is that um, really when you go through and you see the specifics that we're marking on each, each of the components on the teaching and writing side, it's really clearly laid out. So when the course comes to the end and the evaluator is starting to uh, make those decisions and make those determinations about whether candidates are showing uh, the required skills or not, it's very clear for you to see beforehand going into the course and for the evaluator to use as their kind of guide. So for example, when we're teaching, one of our teaching skills or uh, outcomes there is guest service and safety. Is the terrain safe and suitable? Is the, is the learning environment positive and student-centered? And was the teaching safe? And then we have our above meets and below standard scale over on the right-hand side. Communication and lesson structure, was the lesson structure effective? Did it follow that building block format? And was the communication effective? Were the explanations clear? Demonstrations, analysis and improvement, and then the technical content. So all of these things are laid out very clearly. And then the same on the opposite side when it comes to the writing skills. So one of the things we're looking for is that, the, that you can maintain weight centered over the feet equally in relation to different park features. Uniform flexion in joints, so the hips, knees, and ankles have roughly uh, the same amount of flexion, depending on the maneuver and depending on the desired outcome, but in general, the uniform flexion in, in uh, the joints. And then a mobility, uh, mobile or re relaxed position in varied terrain or varied features. So that ability to a sort, of, sort of adjust on the fly your body position. Same thing with turning with the lower body, control of speed, control of direction, balance and rotations. And then the third competency, core competency there of balance over the working edge. Balance is leaning and bending or inclination and angulation and shows the ability to get the board to grip the snow. And then we actually have a new addition here, which is these are the, sort of the big four maneuvers that we're looking for. So the flatland tricks, the rotations, the straight airs, and remember that was straight air with variation, uh, and the railer box. And that was also highlighted as railer box with variation as well, just to make sure that that skill level is at a, at a consolidation or even a refinement level when it comes to these skills, some space for comments, and then the overall, uh, overall mark, which is, um, presented at the top here. So we've got the teaching above meets or below the riding above meets or below. If both of them are a meets or above, then we get that completed, uh, checkbox. And then the, the park one certification is complete. So um, that's a bit of an overview of the course. We're excited about the changes for the course. Um, it's been definitely admittedly a long time coming that we've had the Park One course for quite a while. As I mentioned in the last uh, presentation as well, that um, this new Park course is a prerequisite for the level three certification. 
So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about taking the level three and you haven't done the park course that's starting this year that this park certification is a prerequisite. So you need to have the park one certification on your member profile before you can go ahead and register for the level three course. Um, the only exception to that would be if you are in the process already and you had already completed the course uh, and you're already um, and you're already qualified to go ahead to the level three exams. So that's the other thing to take note on here. And because of that, we know that it'll probably create a little more demand for these park courses. And so we'll, uh, we'll be trying to schedule more so that we don't uh, create too much of a bottleneck for people who are hoping to take the level three but need to get the park one certification uh, first. And even if you're not thinking about the level three, the park, this park course is a great way to expand your skills. It's a great prep for the level two. Um, just the, the, for two days of training, it can really give you a lot more tools for your teaching and make you a, you know, a lot more um, uh, employable and get you, you know, just the potential for more, more teaching and more hours and more work at your local resort. If you can, uh, if you can comfortably take a park lesson out, gets you off the, gets you off the beginner slope and off the magic carpet once in a while as well. So thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoy the presentation. We're looking forward to the park course. Hope to see you guys take advantage of this new park course and uh, we'll catch you next time.